Can you recycle failed 3D prints? Well, today I'm gonna to try by taking parts like this, shredding them and melting them into this. Now I'm someone who cares about the environment, being sustainable, being green, all of that stuff. And I appreciate that my 3D printing hobby doesn't exactly fit with that. Basically, there's two problems, electricity usage and plastic wastage. Electricity usage should be getting better because in Australia, at least, more and more houses are now having solar panels fitted on top. That leaves us with plastic wastage. And a while ago, I decided to collect all of my failed prints and unwanted items, and it was amazing how fast I filled up this bucket. I print almost entirely from PLA, which definitely helps things because PLA is made from cornstarch and it's biodegradable if you compost it at least. But I wanted something more than that. I wanted to be able to reclaim all of the waste and make new things out of it. So that's what this video was about. Now I understand what's to follow is somewhat expensive, a little bit dangerous and definitely a whole lot of work, but I think the concept as a whole is worth following. I'm sure I will improve my processes from what you see here and I'm open to suggestions if you leave them in the comments. If nothing else, maybe this series will make you aware of how much plastic you're wasting and make you cut down a little bit in future. Anyway, let's get started. In this video, I've been inspired by two sources. The first is Precious Plastics. This is a website that has a lot of plans for different machines for reclaiming, shredding, pressing, and injection molding different types of plastics. Everything is open source, but it is somewhat expensive to be able to set up the machines and manufacture them and get them working. And certainly not for the average person to be able to do. My second inspiration was Devin from Make Anything. He did a couple of videos a while back where he did a similar thing. He had some pretty good ideas, but I reckon there's some improvements to be had on efficiency and ease of use for his process, which is what I'm attempting to do in this video. To start off our process, we're gonna start with a paper shredder. We start with this paper shredder, and this is a Power Shred D9 Crosscut Shredder from Fellows. Obviously it's only designed to cut sheets of paper so we need to modify it by opening it up and cutting back the plastic cover to expose all of the teeth and it looks like one of the ones from Precious Plastics. We'll also need to open up the top entrance but there's still going to be issues after that and that's why I designed the following part. This is a top to my shredder to guide everything to keep my fingers out of the way. On the underside you can see it closes the gap between the top cover and the electronics. It was a bit of a nightmare to print. Firstly, I set it half the speed, and that's what the color difference is here. And then I had some lifting in the corner, so I used some hot glue halfway through. It seemed to work okay. I also had a layer shift, and I had to pause the print, manually move it back into position, and then resume, which actually worked. After using the 3D pen to close in some gaps, I took it outside and sanded it back flat. Not pretty, but definitely strong enough. I tapped some M5 holes ready to go and then I used my second part which was a template. I put that on top of the original cover and I used it to drill all of the matching holes and then I used a Dremel tool with it as a guide to trim back the opening so everything would fit snugly. After this I was ready to fit the new part. It fitted in beautifully. I spun it upside down and then I screwed in all of my screws to hold everything in place. I then did a test fit to see if the electronics would line up and they still did and the gap was closed. The original electronics cover went on the bottom, I spun it round and everything lined up perfectly. Nailed it first go. So our shredder is suitably modified, I hope you're ready to see how it works. Spoiler alert, it's actually quite satisfying to watch. Anything thin, it munches straight through because it's designed to do several sheets of paper. This was a failed first layer and look at it go in, it's quite satisfying to watch. As you can see, it's self-feeding. Once it grabs, the parts aren't coming out unless you reverse the motor. Hence the need for this top cover to prevent fingers from reaching the bottom and getting caught. So that's all very well for thin materials, but what about when the going gets tough and we introduce thicker materials? So this is an old cable chain from ABS, and as you can see, it's just too big, even though it fits down for the shredder to grab. It's just not gonna happen with this setup. The good news is that shredder was only ever phase three. Here comes phase two. So here is phase two, not cheap, but definitely powerful and effective. This is designed for shredding palm fronds and branches and things like that. So it'll have no problem with the plastic. As you can see, that cable chain gets munched up and spat at the bottom straight away. It can take parts that are about up to 40 millimeters wide. It doesn't matter how big they are. If it fits through, that's the end of it. It's gonna get shredded. That's because instead of a spinning blade, it's got a large gear that crushes things in between a tiny gap. Sorry, Benji. Okay, but if that's phases two and three, what on earth is phase one? Well, that's actually for things that are too big to fit inside the big shredder. 
Phase one is actually pretty low tech. It's a pillowcase, you put all the plastic inside and then you and your kids smash it to buggery with a large rubber mallet. After that, the pieces will be small enough to hopefully fit in the top and they'll get munched up just like everything else down below. This big shredder never jams, so it's actually quite fast to put things through. I put through everything twice just to make sure it was as small as possible. The second time around was especially fast because the pieces were already small. I could just pour them in the top and gravity and vibration would make them work their way down and out they came. It only took me about five minutes to put the whole bucket through. You can see it's lost about half of its volume from being crushed. I then put a small amount back through the little shredder, ready for the next step. All right, so I've spent probably way too long shredding plastic, but now I've got a nice collection of it and I wanna start melting it. Let's bring on the cheap oven. Let's remelt some plastic. This is a hundred dollar Australian oven from Kmart. I didn't wanna use my regular one. I've got these silicon trays. I think that's one of the improvements I've made over Make Anything. He used mold release and he had a lot of trouble getting things off. The silicon shouldn't stick to the surface and it should be flexible. I sprinkled my parts in and this last one you're seeing here was one of the ones that wasn't crushed down completely. I put the oven up to about 180 degrees. I whacked in my three molds. The reason I can't go higher than that is the silicon starts to smoke, even though it's rated for 225, if I get anything above 180. Our plastic is in the oven. Let's cue a melting time-lapse. It seems like everything's melted down, so it's time to pull it out of the oven and have a closer look. Demolding worked exactly like I liked. This flat one I put in a second silicon tray and then I used a large flat saucepan to try and compress it down and get it as flat as possible. However, that didn't really work out as you'll see later on. The little ingots worked out quite well. The one with the larger pieces seemed to melt just like the others. I was also pleased to see that the stars had worked well also. About half an hour later, it was time to demold, and this silicon one for the stars is a little thing. I think it might rip and perish after a few goes, but nevertheless, for this first go, the stars came out pretty comfortably. The ingots, it was a lot thicker, that silicon, so they came out without any dramas. It didn't stick at all. It was working exactly like I wanted it to. Now, the large, flat, round one, unfortunately, wasn't as flat as I hoped. It was pretty satisfying to peel off the top and bottom, but unfortunately, the top was still quite bumpy. So it seems to have mostly worked, but I've got a couple of questions. Firstly, I wanna know how strong it is. Secondly, I wanna know what it looks like up close. Let's start with the strength. So the strength of the ingots is quite good. They're only about three millimeters thick, but it took a lot of strength to be able to snap it. The stars are even thicker than that, and because they're so small, there's nothing to grip, and I got zero chance of snapping them. Now this big one is the thinnest of all. I can hear it creaking as I flex it, so it needs to be thicker to be strong in future. So I think the potential is there if I get the plastic thick enough and it's nice and uniform, that it's actually gonna be quite strong and usable in other products. But what of the surface quality? We can already see that one side is still bumpy. What's the underside like? So in terms of surface quality, one side on all of them was extremely glossy and nice to look at. All of the colors had melted together perfectly and some of the bits it looks like there's a gap, that was just a translucent piece of plastic. The stars turned out pretty well. You can see there's some tiny bubbles on the surface where maybe things got a little bit hot or air was trapped to begin with. The large disc, like the others, was really rough on one side, but turn it around to reveal, we have another beautiful shiny surface. This is gonna be really nice when I can get it shiny on both sides. So that's as far as I've gotten for now. And I understand this is a little bit useless at this stage, but let me tell you where I'm heading. Firstly, I wanna be able to make these thick sheets to use in my CNC router or even to vacuum form. I think it'll be quite useful for that. I'd like to experiment with CNC machining some molds, maybe putting some silicon over that and then melting things into them so they come out in the final shape first go. The other thing I have is an injection molding machine and I actually think this would be perfect for using with that. The final thing is making filament. And yes, I know it's tricky, but I think my Tebow Tornado with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle should stop any imperfections from clogging it up as I print. The next steps for me are improving the process. This shredder here works quite well, but the motor inside it is quite underpowered. I can envisage it sitting underneath the other one at the bottom so the big chunks fall directly into this. Maybe a chain drive from the powerful motor in the big shredder, powering this one at the same time. So it's a single process of pouring everything in the top, coming out quite small in the bottom. 
I also think there's improvements to be had in how I melt down the plastic. I'm gonna experiment with my press that I have for putting t-shirt designs on. And I reckon a sandwich press might be pretty good as well. I measured the one in the kitchen just after dinner and it gets about 210 degrees, which is perfect for PLA. I think with silicon coating on either side, I should be able to get some pretty flat sheets in about a quarter of the time. That's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you've got some ideas on how I can improve this process or some cool things that I can make with the waste plastic, please leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy plastic shredding. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.